What's up cowboys? It is me, Put McGee here, back with another Magic the Gathering deck tech and gameplay video. And today we're doing Drakes. This is not necessarily an upgrade video for the Arclight Phoenix Challenger deck, but it can kind of be seen as that because that is using the Drakes archetype and this is kind of, this deck that I'm going to be showing you today is more how Drakes is played currently in standard. Um, whereas Ar the Arclight, no, the uh, Arcane Tempo deck is uh, slightly behind the times and built a little bit different. Um, now, if you're wondering, if you ever notice that like my mousing is like my mouse movements are weird or slow or something, it's because I uh, have a wrist, a brace, uh, not a wrist. I do have a wrist, but I have a brace on my right arm, uh, so I can't use this for the mouse or keyboard. So I'm using my left hand to mouse, and it's just a little bit janky. So you'll have to forgive me for that. Uh, I think I'm getting carpal tunnel. My wrist hurts really bad. Uh, so that that out of the way, let's talk about this deck a little bit. It's built on Drakes that, so there's two Drakes, there's Crackling Drake and Enigma Drake right now, and both of these um, gain power the more sorcery and instant cards that are in your graveyard or in Crackling Drakes, uh, in this instance, it's in your graveyard or in exile. So this is a four, uh, four cost creature, it costs two blue and two red, and you get a zero four, but its power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard, and it draws you a card when it enters the battlefield. Um, the Enigma Drake is a little bit cheaper, easier to cast, and almost the same thing, except it doesn't draw you a card when it enters, and you don't get power for cards that are in exile with Enigma Drake. So it can be slightly less powerful when you're casting things with Jumpstart and you end up exiling those cards or something like that, like, or um, you're up against an opponent who's trying to exile cards out of your graveyard. Um, this will maintain power against those opponents and when you're playing your uh, spells with their Jumpstart abilities. So this is that's why Crackling Drake is so good. A, it draws you a card, which is nice, but it also gives you credit for cards that end up in exile. Uh, not just the ones that are in your graveyard. So that's really nice. Um, and so we play four Crackling Drakes and only three Enigma Drakes. Some of these decks will play uh, four Enigma Drakes, but I'm only playing three because I'm also running one copy of niv at Perun. This is not a Drake, it's a dragon, but it basically... Um, it runs in tandem with this deck. It is very hard to cast, though. I should say that it's really hard to cast because it's three blue and three red, and it costs six for a 5-5 five, five flyer. 5-5 um, five, five flyer is very powerful, but its ability is what you're really going to want it for. So whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card, which is already wonderful. It's a really good card engine, but whenever you draw a card, niv at Perun deals one damage to any target. Uh, that's just good. That's excellent removal and you can just pressure your opponent knowing that every time they cast a spell like an instant or sorcery you're going to be dealing them one damage or dealing their creatures a damage and they're giving you cards so it's really really nice uh, to have on the board so this allows us to if we're like up against like a control opponent uh, this is really really good against control opponents so that's why we have one in here if we were playing best of three we would have more in the sideboard to put in against control opponents because this is so good it can't be countered it's hard to remove it uh it's not killed by lava coil or lightning strike or anything like that they have to ha or even cast down they have to have either vraska's contempt or murder or eldritch reborn or some other way to um get rid of this so this is really good against control decks um, we also have Ral is it Viceroy kind of for control decks more against mid range um, because this is going to give us some value in the mid game like some value I mean a lot of value if we can keep this on the board after we play it this is going to be drawing us another card every turn and not just drawing us a card we get to choose what card to put in our hand after we look at the top two this also is removal if we want to use his minus three it's removal it can kill a creature for us. Um, but if we get it to his ultimate, we've basically won the game because it's so good. It draws us a lot of cards and deals us damage to the opponent. So this is really great. Um, we only run two of him, though, because we don't want to get bogged down in the early game with copies of Ral in our hand. Um, because we really want to focus on getting our drakes out and putting pressure on the opponent. Speaking of drakes, we also have three Terramanders, which is another drake. And this is so great because, um, well, this just came in in Ravnica Allegiance, but this is really great because we can get him down on turn one, and then later on in the game when we've cast a bunch of instant or sorceries, we can beef him up by adapting him really cheaply, and so he becomes a 5-5 later on if we can adapt him. So this is really wonderful, and it allows us to have either a blocker against aggro or be able to put some pressure on control opponents really early in the game. Other than those creatures, we really just run lots of instants and sorceries. We run protection for our creatures. That's one of the things um, that's really important in this deck is protection. So we run two dive downs that can give our creatures hexproof and give them a little, little more of a butt on them with a plus zero plus three. 
Um, and we can cast it for one, which is nice. So we only have to keep one mana up to be able to protect our creatures, which is really good. Um, we also have Spell Pierce, which is basically the same. We're usually going to be using it for the same uh, same reason. We're going to be using Dive Down to protect our creatures, but this also helps us sometimes keep um, keep things off the board that we don't want. Like if our opponent is playing, if we're playing Gruul or something, we can keep a Rhythm of the Wild off the board on turn three, um, and Planeswalkers off the board, and other enchantments and things that we don't want. So Spell Pierce is great for that. You can run other counter spells, like you can run Negate if you want. That's a two mana counter spell. Um, and it allows us to be a little more flexible uh, with what our, when our opponent is casting spells, because this, if they have two mana up, they're really going to use it and um, not let their spell be countered, but Spell Pierce is usually good to keep, uh, keep our creatures on the board by countering rem removal and things like that. Um, speaking of removal, we run quite a bit. We have four shocks and three lava coils. Um, the shocks are nice because, again, we can cast them for really cheap, only one mana, and we can shock either sh just shock the opponent's face to deal them damage and beef up our drakes, or we're removing small creatures. Um, Lava Coil is really good because it exiles creatures. It's really good for um, anything that's going to be running Rekindling Phoenix or the other uh, uh, Arclight Phoenix, because we want to exile those. We don't want them going to the graveyard where they can be brought back. So that's why we run Lava Coil, um, and it's just easy to cast on turn two if they've got a beefy creature out we want to get rid of. Uh, that's nice and easy. We do have two Radical Ideas. Not every deck is going to run this. There are other builds of this deck that don't run Radical Idea, but I've actually found it pretty helpful to just be able to kind of filter through cards a little bit, to draw cards for cheap, um, and put we're putting a card in a graveyard, which is always good uh, to beef up our drakes. Speaking of drawing cards, we have four Ops, which is, again, functions the same way as Blink of an Eye, except it's better. Not Blink of an Eye, I mean uh, Radical Idea. Sorry, I always get those names mixed up for some reason, even though they're completely different. Um, Opt allows us to scry one and then draw a card, uh, which is really good w for one mana. This is just a lot of a lot of value for one mana actually. And since we're casting this, it's either going to be triggering Niv Mizzet or just going to the graveyard to add to our Drake power. Um, we also have one Beacon Bolt because sometimes there are creatures on the board that are bigger than four health, and we need to or four toughness. I mean, this is Magic the Gathering. It's called toughness. Um, bigger than four toughness, and we need to kill them. So sometimes this is going to end up like a, like a do seven damage or eight damage or something. So we can get rid of those big creatures um, with Beacon Bolt. We also have Discovery Dispersal. Discovery Dispersal. The first side of this discovery is usually how we're going to be casting this because we can surveil two, and if we want to, we can shove instants and sorceries into the graveyard to beef up our drakes, and then it draws us a card, which is nice. Um, and this itself is an instant slash sorcery, so it beefs up drakes even more. But occasionally. Um, so we run one Dragon Skull Summit. We have one Swamp, one Black Mana Source in this whole um, this whole uh, lands thing we got going on over here, and that's to a very very rarely cast Dispersal, um, where each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand, then discards a card. Um, so sometimes when they've got a really beefy creature like a Carnage Tyrant, for instance, in green or something like that that we need to get rid of and we can't easily. Um, that's when we're going to cast Dispersal. This is rarely going to happen, but it is good in the late game if they've got a big old creature on the field that we have a hard time getting rid of. If it has Hexproof or something, this helps us out a lot. Um, I think I've covered everything except, ooh, Charter Course. Charter Course is wonderful, really great. Draws us two cards, and then we discard a card unless we attacked with a creature this turn. Sometimes we're just going to use this if we haven't attacked just to filter through some cards and draw us some things to figure, like, to find the cards we need to make this deck work. But usually we're going to be attacking with a creature and then casting Charter Course in order to keep cards in our hand because we want to flex card advantage over our opponent. The mana base. Um, I have 22 lands in this deck. I've seen a lot of people only running 21, but I, I personally think 22 is better. Uh, I just don't l trust only having 21 lands when we have a uh, we have creatures for three and four, and even six that we have to cast. Um, normally we're going to be winning the game with crackling drakes and enigma drakes, but honestly. Um, you, you want to make sure you're getting your lands. Of course, we, we do have a lot of ways to draw cards, and so we're going to be cycling through cards a lot, so maybe you can run one less land than this, um, but I personally prefer to have 22. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this deck build in the comments below. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You can just tweak things here and there, have it more spell pierce, run negates, more discovery dispersal, um, another Enigma Drake. You can cut niv -Mizzet, cut one Rowl. You can do a lot of things to this to make it slightly different, but this is how I've built it, and we're going to see how this goes. Let's, uh, let's go get them.
Okie dokie, here we are in game one against Masto. Masto the Sarkin. Okay, oh my gosh. Uh, this hand is pretty dang bad. Uh, four lands. Though I love, I love having all of our, uh, all of these bad boys, our rare lands here. But we just don't have any gas. Um, we've got a shock and we just have to trust that we're going to draw into something good. And I don't trust that. And we don't have a play on like in any of the early turns. So I'm going to mulligan this. And this is actually way better. This is much better keep because we do have shocks for removal early. We only have two lands, but we get to scry. And this is going to, I think this is a better hand. Um, only having two lands is not great, but I think having an opt on top is actually good. So I'm going to play that. And then I'm going to get a Sulphur Falls down on turn two. And we're going to shock that Llanowar Elves into Oblivion because we do not like Llanowar Elves at all. So let's go ahead and shock that. And then I'm going to opt at the end of the opponent's turn just in case I need to shock another Llanowar Elf. Or an Incubation Druid or a Merfolk Branchwalker. Do we care about that? I don't think we really care about that as much, so I'm going to go ahead and opt and make sure we get a land here. Dive down is not what, not what we want. Please draw, like, an island or something. Uh, Charter Course can work. That's not ideal, but it can work. Okay, I think we need a Charter Course here. I know, I know it's bad, because uh, we're going to have to discard something. And I think what we're going to have to discard here is probably Niv-Mizzet, actually. Um... So this looks like Sultai, and they've just now gotten their blue and black sources. Dang. So we don't have our land drop. We're missing land drop already, which sucks. Um, which means we're going to have... It's going to be a long time before we ever cast this, so I think we just discard that and move on, because we're going to end up having to cast Enigma Drake here to get the ball rolling. We may even have to wait and just be casting... Okay, so no, we're probably going to go ahead and play Enigma Drake. I'm not worried about the Merfolk Branch Walker. I'm a bit scared that this gets killed this turn with a cast down or something. Or even a Kral Harpooner could do it. Uh, hostage Taker. That's not the end of the world because we can sh Lava Coil that Hostage Taker on our turn. And we're going to be we're gonna be just fine. Yeah, we go ahead and go ahead and murder that son of a gun right there. So we still can't attack this turn with it because it's going to come in with Summoning Sickness. And then we pass the turn. Mmm... Do we, though? Do we pass the turn? I want to cast Opt to try to find us a land because we really need to hit this uh, hit a land right here. So I'm going to do it now instead of waiting. And I don't want to chart a course. I need something not this. Okay, we're... Whew. I strongly dislike not hitting land drops. It makes me angry. Casting Hydroid Crisis for two, which is an easy shock. That's not a problem. So we'll go ahead and shock that bad boy. And then I'm going to play Discovery Dispersal. Make sure we get a land here. Oh, okay, so we've got two lands on top. And so I'm going to actually keep them both there. And I want to draw the island first so we can play Spell Pierce. Now, I'm not going to play the Terramander this turn. I could play a Terramander this turn, uh, have it ready for next turn, but I really would rather keep Enigma Drake on the field and counter uh, Vraska's Contempt or cast down here on the next turn. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and end turn and hold up Spell Pierce here. They've got a Vraska's Contempt. They may, they probably will cast a creature here if I had to guess, but they might have something else. Nope, Hydroid Crisis. That's a bummer. Hmm, I think we just attack and hope they block here, maybe? Or hope they don't, because this is really okay, because I can play Crackling Drake now. We get to draw a card, it's a mountain. And I think again, I'm going to hold up the Spell Pierce in case there's a Vraska's Contempt coming. Vraska's Contempt. They're going to be able to pay for this, but I want to play this anyway to force them to pay for that and not be able to play anything else that may be a bad choice but I, I don't see myself using spell pierce in any other circumstance than this and that forces them to spend more mana and they can't play any merfolk branch walkers or, or any creatures like that 
Okay, so we can actually play two Terramanders now. I wonder, can I adapt you? Uh, yeah, I can adapt them pretty easily. That's making a weird noise. Um, I don't know if I even play this mountain. I kind of want to keep it in hand to have something to discard if I have to later on. Or I should actually play it uh, just to make sure I have mana for everything that I draw. And these are going to be, these are power, like more powerful later on. That's fine. I don't care about a Carnage Tyrant right now. I've got the life to, uh, to spare. So I'm going to go ahead and adapt you and adapt you. And then I can deal 10 damage to them next turn. Um, the only problem is, if I attack, I'm one away from dying, and if they have any way to buff their creatures, then I will lose, just, I will lose outright. So I may, ooh, but if I don't attack with both of them here, I can't win next turn. And I want to be able to win next turn. Maybe I just attack. I think I just have to attack them. Yeah, because they have to play, they have to have some kind of a, like a buff for their creatures in order to kill me this turn. And I, this, is a, this is risky, but it's a risk I have to take. Oh, okay. The risk paid off. I almost held back for, for one turn. I held back one of my, almost held back one of my, uh, one of my little terramanders there, but I think I made the right choice. That was a little, that was a little scary, guys. Get, got a little scary there. But we, uh, we pulled it out in the end. So let's get into another one. So that was that was one game down. It did pretty well. We had a lot of trouble early on, so that's usually it doesn't perform like that. Um, we had mana trouble early on, so we were really scrambling to get uh, get what we needed. But hopefully, it'll turn out a little better this time. Ooh, uh, this is a terrible hand. Uh, I mean, it's not actually terrible because hear hear me out though. Hear me out. I have a turn one play with Terramander. Turn two, if I don't have another land. Which is not the end of the world. I can lava coil whatever they play, or I can radical idea at the end of the opponent's turn. I think I actually keep this. This seems stupid, but I'm on, I am on the draw first, so I have a chance to draw lands more than the opponent. Um, okay, so it's looking like mono red, which is a bit a bit scary for us. Um, so we're probably going to want to kill Gitsu Lava Runner early. Or we might want to save a Lava Coil for... Eh. No blocks here. Okay, a Shock is actually kind of nice. Um, I think I'm going to attack. Because I don't want to- I don't want to lose my Terramander blocking. Um, and I pass the turn. I think I'm going to probably shock one of these. But I'm interested to see what they play. So Goblin Chain Whirler, well that sucks. Um, yeah, I'll shock the Pyromancer. Goblin Chain Whirler, we can Lava Coil on our turn. But we do lose our Terramander now, which is a bummer. Yeah, Steam Vents is nice, actually. But we're going to go ahead and do this. And then we can play Steam Vents tapped because we don't really have anything else to play. Hopefully soon we can get our Enigma Drake out and start attacking. Um, but if they're running, if they're running Lava Coil in this, which I bet they probably are running a couple copies of Lava Coil, our Enigma Drake's pretty vulnerable without any like uh, spell pierce or anything. Okay, well actually we probably want to Lava Coil their Chain Whirler now. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. And we can Radical Idea uh, at the end of their turn. We don't take too much damage yet. Oh, that's that's gonna be a bit of damage. We'll resolve that. So we're gonna go to what? Uh, shock. So we go to six. Yikes. Okay. Maybe we should have lava coiled their Gitsu Lava Runner, but I don't. I don't really think so. Oh, I meant to draw. Sorry, I got distracted talking, and I meant to play Radical Idea. That was really stupid. That was pretty bad. Um. So here, I'm going to play Enigma Drake and then just straight up, I'm just going to Lava Coil their Lava Runner so they don't have any damage on the board and they have to trust whatever is in their hand. 
um, which might be nothing. Um, though if it's something, if it's something bad, okay, experimental frenzy. I'm not worried about that. Spell pierce is actually really good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and radical idea to give Enigma Drake a little more, a little more juice. Raoul is not a terrible pickup, but it's not great, uh, seeing how much mana we have right now. So we'll in turn. Skewer the critics, we will spell pierce that because they cannot pay for that. And they probably concede, yeah? Yeah, okay. The problem is, me. I guess I play I play the Rao and hopefully I can beef up my Enigma Drake. I'm a little worried about next turn what they might draw. I was hoping, ooh. We can't even play Opt, so I think maybe we put it in the graveyard to beef up our Enigma Drake. And so we win, if we, if we survive this turn, we'll win. Unless our Enigma Drake gets killed, which is a possibility if they have Lava Coil, but they don't. So that's another win. Hey, hey. So we do actually, when I think about it, we do pretty well against Mono Red because we have quite a bit of removal, and it's removal that hits everything that they have. Um, shocks are good for against Mono Red. A Lava Coil is great against Mono Red. Um, we were lucky that we did have a Spell Pierce in hand when they wanted to uh, hit us with the Skewer of the Critics, because if they'd had like another skewer the critics under that that could have been trouble but it, it happened to work out it worked out and so i can't complain Alrighty, righty we've got a third game here number three against mcherson mc mc mcherson oh uh opponent goes first and we have a hand with two ops and two spell pierces in it I think got a mulligan this partly because we start with mountains. If we had an island in hand and we could cast opt on turn one, this would be a different story. But we don't, so I think I need a mulligan that. And I'll keep this because we get to scry, and I'm gonna put that on the bottom to make sure we pull a land early. Okay, it looks like mono blue, looking like mono blue, and so I can probably I'm gonna go ahead and mountain and shock on the siren storm chamber just to keep. Keep them off the board. Um, I probably should have waited. So I know that they run uh, dive down and things. So if they'd had a dive down and I'd waited for them to put Curious Obsession on and they played dive down or even Spell Pierce, then I would have um, lost out on that trade. But I think so. I think I made the right move. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and chart a course now, even though I'm gonna have to discard something. Ooh. I want to keep Lava Core. I want to keep everything except maybe I lose the Terramander. Terramander does the least for me, honestly, because um, I want to be playing Enigma Drake next turn. Maybe I should have just played Steam Vents and tapped this turn and just passed. Um, yeah, so there's Curious Obsession, but fortunately we have removal, or we have we're gonna have blockers though, which is good, because um, Enigma Drake is great. Um, blocks it blocks this and kills it at this point in the game, but we're gonna have to eat a little damage okay so that's not a problem either oh okay that's good so we don't have to to play the steam vents we can just go ahead and enigma drake here and they don't have mana to counter it so they opt and unless they have a if they have a merfolk trickster they can tap our enigma drake and let their start siren storm tamer hit me and draw them a card but if they don't uh, then we gonna be all right. No, I'm saying. What you got? There's the Merfolk Trickster. Okay, okay, man, not cool. Ah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna shock in the Steam Vents here and play uh, Crackling Drake. Now the. We have lots of blockers. By lots of blockers, I just mean more than one. More than one blocker. So they'd have to play two more folk tricksters, tricksters next turn to get through my defenses. Um, and I've got removal for the, in the turns to come. So I, and we're in a pretty good spot here, actually. I'm, I'm hesitant to play the Lava Coil, though, 
because they, I'm sure, will have a dive down or a spell pierce or something like that, which is always lame. So they're they're going for it. They're really going for it. I'm gonna block here. Um, what it, what, what do you have? Why would you do this? I don't completely understand what they're trying to do here, but um, okay. Dive down. All right. Well, you've just wasted a dive down. McCurson, you've wasted a dive down. Why? You can't do anything now. Okay, so I will kill. I will shock the heck out of you. Um, I will attack with one of these. I'll attack with Crackling Drake, see if they block. I kind of doubt they block at this point. Um, and then I'm gonna, ooh, I'm actually gonna chart a course first. Make sure we draw some, some goodies. And then I'm going to Lava Coil the, so they wanna get to, they have one, two, three, four, four in their graveyard, which means that they can adapt him if they, uh, have one more mana, so I'm gonna go ahead and kill the Terramander and then move on. Tempest Gin, uh, it's not really that much of a problem. Yeah, not a problem. I'm going to. Ooh, do we want to opt? I think I opt. To make my creatures a little beefier. I don't want that. I'm looking for a lava coil here. Lava coil would be great. Or a beacon bolt or something. Um, okay, let's go ahead and... I'm going to double attack here. They're going to be forced to block with something, right? You would think. I guess I could have charted... I could have charted a course. Charted, charted a course? That's the correct usage. I probably could have charted a course... And then discard discarded another spell into the graveyard um, to make them make this lethal if they don't block. So maybe I should have done that and been a little more aggressive. But I'd rather force. I mean, they're gonna block now with with that, right? Okay, so that's nice that they lose that. Um, I'm going to play the island. We chart a course. If we pick up. Eh, I could play I could play an enig an, an Enigma Drake as a blocker because um, they're basically screwed. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're basically screwed anyway. But this makes them makes it for sure that they won't have blockers for all of these next turn, and so this is probably a concede from Mick Herson at this point. Unless they've got something really spicy. Curious Obsession. Not a problem. We can... Okay, Curious Obsession on you. You have one mana up. We will block Tempest Gen. If he has a dive down, Tempest Gen survives, but they still will die next turn. So I don't really care. Um, yeah. Why? Why, McHerson? Why have you done the thing that you've done? Um, okay, you've got a Terramander. That's fine. I will shock your Terramander and win the game. <laughs> that was kind of like a my evil doctor slash Waluigi laugh. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> this what are we what are we done three is that three wins? Golly, this deck is overperforming right now. It's performing much better than it should be. To be honest, this is a a good deck, but it's not like top tier. I feel like Mono Blue is generally better. Um. But maybe this is just it's just a good matchup against mono blue and mono red i guess yeah yeah we'll see all right here we're gonna go we're gonna do a fourth game against zarvlad uh do i like this i don't think i like this hand we only have two lands and we have a shock i guess i guess we have a terramander on turn two if we want it i guess i'll keep this this is risky, though. I don't have any draw spells. Um, uh, this is why 
having only two hands in two two lands in this hand. I do only have two hands though. Having only two lands in this hand is the main reason I don't want to run um, less than twenty two lands because we're just seriously reducing the uh, the likelihood of drawing a land every like you know every time we draw. Um, so we have we have some crappy starting hands like this uh, that we just, I kind of took a risk on this one. It's probably gonna bite me in the butt. Uh, no, okay. Um, let's attack. And then play an Enigma Drake at 1-4, one 1-4 four, one four power. Um, they'll probably... Actually, do they have a way to kill Enigma Drake? They Lightning Strike me. Fine. Fine. Um, yeah, I guess if they have a Lava Coil, they could kill Enigma Drake, but I kind of doubt they do right now. Okay. Okay. Pyromancer, not a big problem. I'm going to just just attack all. I probably could have kept Enigma Drake actually back as a blocker for the Vyushino Pyromancer. Probably should have done that because I do have a dive down. Yeah, nah, that was probably dumb actually. Probably dumb. Yeah, so now I have to take two damage, which I don't. I should. I shouldn't have done what I did. You know what I'm saying? Um, yes, yeah, so we take two, and then do they have a do they have a play here? Yeah, light up the stage. I wish I had a spell pierce for light up the stage because that really screws the opponent if you can stop that, and so they can get a fanatical firebrand. And so now I know that they have a fight with fire, which is probably going to. Uh, oh boy, do they kill my fanat my uh, terramander? Dang. So, having, yeah. These lands are boo boo. Because uh, we can't cast our castle. Ca crackling Drake. I want to just attack with Terramander. And they kill it, which is okay. I'm going to let it happen. I'm not going to dive down because I want to. I'd rather dive down the Enigma Drake uh, when they try to fight with fire on me. Assuming they draw a land, which they. And they have to draw a land in order to play this, so they might not. And if they attack... Yes, so I block. And since, since I've got to dive down, I can stop them from lightning striking, lightning striking, or shocking me. Booyah, my dude. <laughs> so actually, if they have another shock in hand, they can hit me with it before this actually... Uh, happens but i still it will still survive so wizard's lightning fine because now it's a 2-4 and it still dies nice try homeboy <laughs> they messed up they really messed up yeah i feel bad for them they misplayed that so bad um okay so we can't cast this so i'm going to get rid of that i'm gonna put that on the bottom and hopefully we draw yeah lava coil will work because it's good removal for like uh whatever our opponent plays it's nice removal that we can cast Still digging for another blue mana source to play a Crackling Drake. Still don't have one. So we will we will go ahead and attack. And they're still stuck on two lands, which is a danger of playing mono red, my dude. You should you should have known. Actually, I can play Ral. I can play Ral as a Vice Roy right now. I'm definitely gonna do that. Why was I thinking I was gonna play Terramander? Yeah, um, we're in a pretty good spot right now. Pretty dang good. Lightning strike on me, so I go to 10. I have a hard time believing they're going to be able to produce 10 damage. Um, I'll keep the island, actually. This is important. I have a hard time believing they're going to produce 10 damage on me this turn. Are ya? Vishino Pyromancer. So they can actually hit Rao if they want, but they probably go for the face. So we drew another island. I can do a Crackling Drake. Yeah, I think I play the Crackling Drake now. We drew a Charter Course, and then I'm going to do this. Pick up a Shock. Okay, Shock is actually good. I'm going to go ahead and... Ooh, the bummer is that I can't cast both of these. 
So, and I guess I just, no, 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 don't lava coil. Why am I lava coiling now? I should just shock now. This gives, this becomes a 5-5, five five, or 5-4, five I mean. So, I kill them next turn unless they can kill one of these. Or kill me. They could potentially kill me, but I seriously doubt it at 3 mana. They'll be very tough. With no creatures, they can't cast Wizard's Lightning for one. Um, they could do, if they had, that would be a, a huge bummer. If they had a shock, skewer the critics and a skewer the critics, we'd be in a world of pain. Okay, Runaway Steamkin, I think we're going to be alright. Yeah, I think that's going to be GG, probably. Have we just gone 4 0, my dudes? Let's do this just because. Because they could. P no, they can't kill. They can't kill either of these. I mean, but we take a spell pierce anyway. Whatever. We'll lava coil you for fun. My hand almost slipped and lava coiled my own Enigma Drake right there. That would have been sad. That would have been really sad. Bye bye, opponent. Yeah, okay, they're lightning striking themselves. I'll resolve that. <laughs> Sad. That's something that I do too when I'm like, especially when I'm playing mono red and I know that I'm about to die. I'm just like, oh, I'll just kill myself. Just shock myself to death. It's fine. It's fine. Commit toaster bath. Okay, well, that actually went super well. Uh, four games, four wins. Not too bad. Um, that's going to be all for today. You guys let me know what you thought of this deck in the comments below. Let me know what changes you would make if you liked this deck, if you liked this video. Um, if you have suggestions for me on how to change my videos, how to change uh, anything about my channel. I'm trying to grow the channel a little bit um, and improve my content. So if you have suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. And other than that, smash like. Bye-bye.